Welcome back everyone. This will be a Right Stuff anime haul. Included is a large order that I made back during their holiday sale. That is by far the biggest box I've ever received from Right Stuff anime, so I'm really excited to get into it. I'm really hoping everything arrived in good condition. Um, because this tends to happen with a lot of the boxes I receive from Right Stuff. They use that paper tape that has the the threading through it to reinforce it but it always rips at the top for some reason here on the sides and that happened with this box but I also have a few things that I received during Christmas and then also this that came late from my previous Right Stuff haul. So I will include everything together. I'll start with this one. This is Princess Tutu. I've been wanting this anime for a long time and it was really cheap during their holiday sale. It did go out of stock while it was in my cart though and I didn't realize until it was too late so I just went ahead and made my order anyway. Thankfully they did partial shipping so I didn't have to wait for this to come back in stock before they shipped my order. So here is what the case looks like. This is licensed by Sentai Filmworks and I never actually got to finish it when I was younger. I started watching it on a bootleg site and never finished but I always did enjoy the story of which I don't remember <laughs> so I can't really tell y'all what it's about. Yeah, the synopsis on the back is pretty detailed, so I'm not going to read it. So the disc inside was pretty loose, and it fell right as I opened the case, so that's fun. That's great. A great start to this. Um, so just be careful. I am holding this right at the edge of the table as well. Had I been doing my usual thing, it probably would have just fallen on the table. Um, but here's a good look at the discs. Got the main character on one, then with the prince on one side, another, and then... I think this is the antagonist dressed a little scantily or um without her tutu at least this is ballerina theme and it has great animation and a cute story um and this is kind of like a i think i remember it being pretty magical girl ish but i don't remember honestly either way it's a classic it's 26 episodes i think i only paid 13 dollars for this that's a really good deal and yeah really happy i got this and then this is also dubbed which is great. Then my boyfriend bought me Mob Psycho 100 Season 2. So happy for this. I love Mob Psycho and it recently just finished. So I'll have to get Season 3 at some point. This is by Funimation. And I did already open this because I opened it on Christmas Day. But here's what the insert looks like. I love it. And I'm actually going to use that as the cover from now on. And then included is the Funimation digital code, um, as well as some adorable discs. Look at this disc art. So good. And it has DVD and Blu-ray. That's why there's four. So really thankful to my boyfriend for getting me this. Um, it was so expensive. As much as I love it, um, it I have a hard time paying uh, $40 and above for any anime. So I'm really glad he got it for me. And then the last thing he bought me was this Yana Toboso Black Butler artwork book, volume two, I believe. She did release one a while back, actually, because um, it had been a while. I knew it existed, but I never bought it. And this one, this mangaka is one whose art I really appreciate. It just, it's very classic. Like if you grew up on Black Butler, you always admired their work because they capture detail and color and style so well. And all of these works are Black Butler related. I kind of wish she released one. I'm sure she did actually, but I didn't see it on Right Stuff's website. But I do wish I had one of her artwork just in general. Not just Black Butler. And some of these pages are unique. Like they have these insert pages that are really cool. So good. Such really cool artwork. It's hard to flip through it like this. And then the back has a fold-out poster, I believe, of this, which I might try and show y'all. Oh, snap. So it keeps going, but I'm not going to fold out the whole thing because it's pretty long. Um, and then it also comes with this ribbon here at the end for you to tie it closed, which I thought was a neat touch. 
really fits the theme of Black Butler. So I'm really happy that he got this for me. It's beautiful and it was absolutely worth the price tag. But now the package I have been waiting for for months um, because I did order this and most of the stuff was in stock. And then as I was waiting for sales, unfortunately stuff did go out of stock. But thankfully I didn't have to wait months into into the year to get all of my order, which is what happened last year. But we can blame COVID for that. Oh wow. There's a lot going on. So it's not as much as I thought. I guess they just ran out of boxes that might have fit all of this at once. So I'll just start pulling things out. Let's start with the anime. So I did purchase season four of My Hero Academia. I have seasons three, two, and one. So one, two, three. I don't know why I said it like that. And wow, this is really dusty. Like they were dying to sell this. I usually wait for them to release the full box set of the season before grabbing it. Um, because I absolutely loathe parts one and two type box sets. Those are stupid. Just give me the whole season. Yeah, this is a really old copy. The plastic is really stuck onto the cover. But here's what it looks like. And then the back. So it does have the digital code on the inside. Um, here is disc one. It has Muriel. Disc two. Three Airy. This is her arc. Oh gosh, yep. Here's a loose disc. Ah! Deco better be on one of these. Oh, it's an edgy thing. I guess that makes sense. This is the season they're introduced, I believe. And then it has this insert with Kirishima at the center. This arc, I think, is legendary. And it has an amazing fight at the end. So I'm really happy to finally own that se season. I'm really not looking forward to completing my collection by getting season five because it was really boring. <laughs> um, but season six so far is really good. Um, I did read ahead with the manga, so not a lot of it surprised me and I was disappointed at parts, but overall I think season six is pretty good. Now, let's get on to the manga. The first thing I pulled out was Die Dark. This is another manga by the author of Doro Hitoro which I absolutely loved. I love their artwork. I love their type of storytelling and their characters. It was just a fun ride. This is rated older teen and it's published by Seven Seas Entertainment. Apologies if y'all can hear my brother. But it's got the glossy finish with the artwork and title and then the, the number as well. And then the background is a matte finish, which makes a really cool texture. There is the main character, I'm assuming. It kind of reminds me of some of the characters in Doro Hidoro. Wow. Just look at that. So good. Oh, that new book smell. It smells really good. <laughs> but absolutely love that. It's a really thick volume, too. A lot of manga nowadays is not very thick, so I appreciate the thickness. Next, I got volumes four five, six, seven, and eight of the case study of Vanitas. Just to continue, I neglected to continue my manga ASMR series, but I am still reading this manga. Um, and I've been holding off on reading it from the library just so I could grab the volumes. Um, I was hoping for a bundle this year, but unfortunately the bundles they made um, weren't in threes. So I had to buy volumes four on its own and then buy five through seven as a bundle of four. Which is fine, because it was still really, really cheap. So I'm really happy to finally own this. I haven't actually watched the anime. Um, I thought about it, but because I'm still reading the manga, I kind of still want to get through a good chunk of it before I actually start watching. But just look at this gorgeous artwork. It's so pretty. And it's by the same, the same author and artist of Pandora Hearts, if you've ever read that. Such a such a great series and an awesome anime that was not accurate but it was still a good ride and their art has only improved with time it's great so really happy to have this
next because I saw it on sale is volume two of Play It Cool Guys. I did enjoy the first volume. It's pretty chill. What I really appreciate is that it's full color. So it's really nice to look at while you read it and it is very enjoyable. Just little basic stories about these guys trying to pay, play it cool. I apologize y'all. I've been rushing because um, everyone's making noise and I just wanna get through this without too much noise in the background. So I haven't been saying the summaries. Um, my hair is pretty self-explanatory. I feel like I don't have to explain that. And the case of Vanitas is a little detailed. All you need to know is that it's about a vampire in half human, half vampire society. And they're looking for an artifact, really more or less something like that. And then Die Dark, based on the summary, sounds like it's about a teenager with cursed bones, which is interesting. And Play It Cool Guys is for teens and published by Yen Press. So the next four volumes I have are volumes one through four of a series that I discovered while I was browsing on Amazon, oddly enough, and then I thankfully found it on Right Stuff. Oh no, it's slightly damaged on the bottom. That sucks. Uh, but this is a series called The Splendid Work of the Monster Maid by Yugata Tanabe. So I'm going into this blind because I wanted to be surprised really, and I did buy all four volumes that were available. This is about a cat girl. I'm not, I don't really care for cat girls, but I do care about maids. And oh my gosh, look at this artwork in the back. And I love spooky things. So I thought this was a jackpot and the art is so cute and appealing to the eye. Look at that. I love that manga comes with colored pages more often now. So, so good. So I'm excited to read this and hopefully it becomes one of my favorites, especially if they release more volumes. I don't know how long this is. I didn't bother to look up too much um, so I wouldn't spoil myself. So I don't know how long this has been running in Japan itself. The next one has similar vibes. This is Creepy Cat Volume 2 and 3. They were on sale so I decided to pick them up because the first volume, which I haven't finished, um, but what I did read was really enjoyable and I love the artwork. I feel like I have to say this every time I pick up something cat related. I am not a cat person, but I discovered this particular artist on Twitter of all things. I don't know how their stuff got on my timeline, but I really like the aesthetic. I really like the design of the main girl. Just love her design and the story so far is really cute and, and enjoyable and I love the art and the fact that this whole volume is in color. Um, it's in a matte finish so it's not like glossy pages like um, Play It Cool Guys but solid book. Like really hefty, well binded and everything. And this is by, oh I forgot to say what the other one was. Um, so this is by Yen Press, the splendid work of a monster made by Yugata Tanabe. And then this is by Seven Seas Entertainment. And the story and art is by Cotton Valent, which is an artist you can find online. So yeah, really excited to have those. Just three things left. Let's go with a spooky one. So this is, oh gosh, I can't read this. I think it's called PTSD Radio. Was I right? Yes. <laughs> by Masaki Nakayama, which a lot of people are hailing as a new, um, Junji Ito level horror artist or horror mangaka. So I got curious, especially with this psychedelic cover. Not psychedelic, but it's got those vibes, you know, something weird and surreal. Here's the inside. Oh, wow. The inside cover is actually um, not engraved, but they punched the shape of the, the drawing on the front into it. Let me look at this art style. Okay, so it's got um, a very similar art style to Junji Ito's style, just like realistic. So for this one, I'm most excited to know what the story is like, because um, I've read a lot of Junji Ito stuff, and while I do like it, it's definitely a particular type of horror that um, I like, but I don't have, you know, a dire need to collect. So I'm excited to go into this blind. Just going into books blind is very exciting to me right now. <laughs> oh, and this is published by Kodansha. 
rated mature, obviously, for 18 and above. And the last two are some Yaoi titles. I'll start with this one. This is volume two of On and Off. I had this in my last haul, I believe. This is really heavy. <laughs> this is rated mature, boys love, and it's printed by Tokyo Pop, who I'm assuming is coming back. Um, but good on them for going after Korean titles because a lot of them are so good. Um, I believe I've read through, let me sneak a peek. I believe I've read through most of what the content of this second volume is, but I did enjoy it. Um, you can kind of tell from the artwork and Korean comics um, are read from left to right. So you'll notice I'm flipping through it the opposite way, but look at this artwork, I love it. And the whole thing is in full color which is great. Um, again, they're not glossy pages, they're matte, but they're still really thick and a nice quality. Not really, really thick, but you know. Um, and then the front cover is matte with the exception of the artwork of the two characters and the title. All the accent stuff is, isn't glossy. So it's really nice to feel this book. It's nice and smooth. Oh, I'm sorry. There was some saucy stuff right there. So far, I'm having fun rereading it. This is by artist A1. And it's just a little office romance that gets off on the wrong foot due to misunderstandings. And it gets really cute really fast. And then the final book I have is Killing Stalking Deluxe Edition Volume 2. This story and artwork is by an artist named Kugi, who originally published their story on Lezen, the online webcomic service, which I actually did use to pay for, but it got expensive very fast. Um, but there's, this is definitely horror. Um, some people may have heard it has a reputation. This is a horror story that revolves around, um, a stalker and someone who is, I don't want to call them a sociopath, but they have some trauma that, um, releases itself as, in very unpleasant ways. It explores their relationship as they deal with their trauma and issues, basically. There's a lot of murder, a lot of uh, sexual things, but overall I think I do recommend the story as a horror. I think it's really good, and the way it ended was perfect. Parental Advisory Explicit Content, and this is published by Seven Seas, and there's a lesson. A link if anyone wants to check that out. And for anyone wondering, I did look it up. Deluxe edition just means that it's in full color, so I'm assuming some of their other Korean comic publications are not um, are not going to be in color, which is really funny because Creepy Cat um, does not say deluxe, but it's in color as well, and it's also by Seven Seas. So I don't know. I don't know what if that's just a marketing scheme that they came up with or what, but um, the fact that you get a pretty thick book I think is worth the money. Apologies for the weird angle. I was trying to capture all of it and Die Dark kept getting cut off so this was the best I could do without having to hold it up above everything. Um, this is everything that I purchased from Right Stuff with the exception of the the three or, or two gifts that I received for Christmas of which I'm very grateful for. I will make sure like always to link everything because all of this stuff is available on rightstuffanime.com. Their holiday sales for 2022 were amazing very reminiscent of when I first started buying from them and they had their amazing holiday sale where I got so much manga for cheap. I'm excited to see what they do for their birthday sale in the summer and I might be able to pick up a few things that I'm already looking at. But for now this will do and it'll be so fun to rearrange my bookshelf. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.